do the heathen rage, and the people imagine a vain thing. The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against Yahweh and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bonds asunder, and cast their cords away from us. He that sits in heaven shall laugh, Elohim shall have them in derision. Hide me from the conspiracy of the wicked, from the noisy crowd of the ones doing evil. Don't you say a conspiracy concerning all whereof this people shall say a conspiracy. Neither fear their fear, nor be in dread of it. Yahweh said to me, A conspiracy is found among the men of Judah and among the inhabitants of Jerusalem. There is conspiracy of her prophets in the midst of it, like a roaring lion ravening the prey. They have devoured souls. They take treasure and precious things. They have made her widows many in the midst of it. Welcome to the Conspiracy Bereans Show with your host, Robert Randall, exposing the works of the devil to the light of Yeshua's word. And welcome, Bereans. It is I, your host, Robert Randall. Welcome, one and all, to the show. And today, we have with us special guest, Laura Maxwell. Laura Maxwell uh, used to be um, someone who was in the kingdom of darkness. She used to be a New Ager and a channeler. And now, she goes around speaking and uh, doing TV shows, radio interviews. She's written some books. Uh, all about the new age, all about spiritualism, why uh, why messing around with Ouija boards and crystals and reading new age literature and uh, messing around with uh, spirits themselves is so dangerous. So welcome to the program, Laura. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Robert. Thank you for asking me. I really appreciate it. Yeah. So some of you who are probably listening are thinking, wait a minute. Laura was on two weeks ago. What, what, why is she on again? Well, the deal was, on my end, I, I take full blame. Basically what happened was, that day that I originally broadcast the show, we had recorded it. And I was having so many technical difficulties that I was doing things old school. And I had to basically go through and do some patchwork. But now that we finally have things working, it's it's good to have the broadcast back the way it needs to be, and we're glad to have you on. So, Laura, for those uh, listeners who don't know you and don't know about your ministry, uh, tell them about yourself. Uh, give us your testimony. Yes, thanks, Robert. Um, I'd like to just start with a, a small correction, if, if I may. I wasn't a channeler myself. Oh, okay. My mother was. Yeah, my mother was. Oh, all right. Certainly, I was heading in that direction. Um, yeah, my story has since appeared um, in, in the media, in books, school books, even New Zealand, Australia, uh, TV programs whereby other TV channels around the world have created these languages. Like, um, so yes, and I think basically that's because this is the side of the story that you rarely ever hear. Um, it tends to be only one side of the story, so it's just wonderful that I've been given such wonderful opportunities to share, and I'm so grateful. Amen. Um, yes, basically, um, you know, I was brought up really with an interest in anything supernatural, anything spiritual, esoteric, and so as a child I was fascinated by such things, uh, for example, ghost stories, psychic phenomena, Aliens, anything at all that was considered, um, you know, different and uh, not the, the status quo. My mother had been the same growing up herself. She had an interest there too. And uh, she had psychic experiences as a child. And I had some of those too growing up. So by the time I got to about 12, 13, um, but by that point she had read books from, from the library, we didn't have the internet just yet, um, really pursuing these kind of interests. And then when I was about 13, she was approached by a local 
medium in the park while she was walking her dogs and he said he could see that, that she was a, a medium, that she had the gift of clairvoyance and so on and that she would benefit from coming along to psychic development classes, channeling classes and uh, he invited her to the spiritualist church that he attended in Glasgow. So she went over there and very quickly took to all. Um, turns out that, you know, this ran in our family, so it had been inherited down, down the generations. We had an uncle who was leader of a spiritualist church, and he was also high up in Freemasonry, so it was something that did run in the family. So anyway, she, she went along there, and eventually I started to go on to her. And that's where our beliefs, you know, really did take really quite a, a deep uh, path, if you like, because up till that point, I guess we weren't so sure if there was God or if there was one, who was he and all of that. But certainly within the, the spiritualist teaching, we were taught that in actual fact, Lucifer is, is God and that... We were taught Theosophy, we were taught the famous medium um, and mother of the New Age movement, Madame Helena Blavatsky, uh, the Lucis Trust, these types of organisations that, that Lucifer really is either God or, or the, you know, the, the angel, the, the, the saviour type figure, and that basically all spiritualities and all spiritual supernatural phenomena actually were rooted and come from him, so we believe that because we were taught it. Um, so yeah, we went along and um, also when, when spirits and so-called entities and so-called spirit guides, ascended masters and the likes, when they turn up and tell messages to the deeps, telling them that, that Lucifer, you know, is the good guy and the source of everything, you don't tend to question that because if you have a supernatural experience, you tend to so really delved into that and we went to different classes with into alternative therapies um, what, what we called it back then opening the chakras testing seeds like reincarnation we went to psychic fairs we really tried to absorb as much information as we could for our spiritual enlightenment we further believed in universal consciousness um, you know, the idea that, that everyone, we are all one. And uh, can you still hear me, Robert? Hello? I think we maybe got cut off there. I'm not sure if you can still hear me, so I'll keep talking. Um, we believe in consciousness. Uh, and, and really the idea that, you know, really doesn't matter what religion a person has, what spirituality, what types of beliefs, even if they're an atheist or, or whatever, you know, we are all one and we are all, we should be, if you like, aiming towards the light. And if we don't make it this time, we can be reincarnated, come back again and keep on. Uh, and believed in karma and so on. So, um, I'm not sure if you can hear me, because it seems to me that we can't. Yeah, I, I can hear you fine. So, you're coming through fine, Lauren. Really, we, we really get right into that, and, and obviously there was a lot of... Well, you can hear me. I couldn't hear you at all there. Um, so, really, we, we would have been to all of this, and we had a passion for, for the environment. Obviously, Mom and I were animal lovers, we love nature. We had a passion for conservation, social justice international peace you know just and we were interested in psych healing and a different healing than exist so we kept on it really was very, all very fascinating we um very quickly disregarded the bible um, and then to do with that because we were taught by uh, our leaders and of course by these entities that uh, the bible couldn't be trusted um, Jesus Christ wasn't the saviour 
the so on. So we really kind of ditched that. Although we were taught there are truths in in all types of of um, uh, faiths, but that you no, know, the Bible was was basically wrong. That that it was a a, a, a book to just control. Uh, and so on and couldn't be trusted. So my mother, um, she really got into it quickly. I was still quite young, kind of pre-teen, adolescent age. So obviously I was at school and busy with friends. I didn't go quite as often as her. She got into automatic writing where she began to channel these entities. Um, similarly, they, they prophesied to me that I would become a psychic artist and, and draw portraits of so-called dead relatives or spirit guides and so on uh, and get into Caroline photography which she's using infrared film to capture spirits. So these are things I was certainly to do and plan to do eventually once I've got through school and so on. However, quite early on we did begin to hear rumours that often things channelers, medium psychics could no longer control when spirits spoke to them or, or spoke through them. Uh, we heard of people who, for example, the transfiguration mediums that allow the spirit to speak through them and the medium's face would even change and you could literally see the features of the apparent dead relative or a standard master or whatever. That mediums would get to the point whereby they could no longer control it, and this was happening to them against their will. This was happening to them like almost 24 7, they weren't getting sleep, and so on. And really, we began to question why is this why is this happening? Even accounts of channelers who were beginning to get attacked by entities, and the, the often the reason being for that would be well. You are dealing with spirits after all. Sometimes an obnoxious spirit can come through and if you're not protected enough, um, or if you have low karma, or, or if you are negative, or if you are fearful, then those entities can come through. And yeah, we, we tended to believe that uh, line of reasoning. However, it didn't seem to explain all of it. And, and we were also told, and he, and he, who had written books, uh, you know, down, down, down the years, and even in the Psychic News, which was a pa paper that we used to read back then, sometimes mediums admitted that their friends, so called dead relatives, so called spirit guides, would tell them lies. Um, and it's interesting, I noticed today we still hear that now, even the likes of um, people who are not, not Christians say this, um, that there are some light workers who admitted that um, they're no, no longer light workers because they come to realise the entities they were in touch with eventually began to tell them last and so it's all full of fraud. Uh, David Icke, he, he has said the same, that they can't trust spirit guides. So it's, this isn't just, you know, Christian propaganda here. Um, this is something that is um, actually known. Wait, 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 so did, did I hear that right? Did, did you just say David Icke? Us and, um, uh -huh. David Icke, the, the, the guy who yeah. does the reptilian presentations, he, he said that he doesn't count on yeah, light workers I anymore? Was, um, I think I saw one. No, no, he, he said that, um, you know, you can't always trust spirit guides. They, um, lie to you and not necessarily the way to be. Um, that's the conclusion he's come to. But I was saying in a similar vein, there are light workers who have come out and said this too. In fact, um, I posted one of them on my blog. It's a light worker. He, he uh, exposed this on his blog and he had hundreds of replies from other light workers um, who basically had been through the same or, or who were listening to his um, disclosure. So, cool. oh, oh yeah, you know, and mediums themselves, channelers too, who, who have discovered this, you, you can't always trust uh, an entity is who it claims to be because they can tell lies and, and end up not being the entity you thought it was. So really that um, begs the question, well, well how can you trust 
entity appears to you and talks to you, um, claiming to be a spirit guide, a dead relative, a goddess, an alien, whatever. If, if any of these shape shift and pretend to be someone else, really can you trust any of them? That's eventually where my mum and I got to it took a while. We began to be attacked by these so called spirit guides, ascended masters, you know. And again, we were told things like, well, we can't understand what's going on because you guys have got good karma, etc., etc. The, the different mediums and channelers who actually brought these entities through to us, you know, they, they, they saw these entities too. So if these entities had been so called fraudulent ones, you would have thought those mediums would have discerned it in the first place. So they were deceived by all too. And yeah. then, of course, it was bad. It, it was bad enough being physically attacked and so on. Um, what one might describe as sleep paralysis, and uh, really, really bad as a person is literally in the room and uh, assaulting you. But that was confusing enough. However, when the entities that had always claimed to be their dead family began to do that, that was really confusing, and. Of course, when that happened, we, you know, the, the mediums that we knew, like the channelers, the psychics, the lovely, lovely people, um, I can't say a bad word about any of them, they were all lovely people. This isn't to, I've not got an axe to grind with any of them at all, and they tried them really their best to help us, um, to protect them from this, but really they just help. So eventually my mother and I just stopped going along to the Spiritualist Church and we thought, you know, we're just going to have to try and survive and, and deal with it on our own. We did fear for our lives, the two of us, we feared for our lives, we feared for anyone who came into our home, our pet animals. Um, so, and it got actually got, got worse and thing, things got worse and we, we, uh, my mother tried to call out to all different kinds of gods she got um, books out the library, or encyclopedias of all different kinds of entities, spirits, God, you name it, and tried to call out to a lot of them. Didn't work at all. In actual fact, I would say it got worse, probably because we, we let more of them in. Um, so again, she was getting taken against her will by um, spirits, you know, coming through and just making her lose time. She would lose track of time and not know where she had been, not, not, not know what she had done. Um, and obviously, because they were just speaking through her, they were just messing with her. She was terrified. They, were, they told her they would force her by astral projection to take her out of her body and out this realm and chase her through various dimensions for the rest of eternity. This was the, the kind of a torturous things they, they threatened her with. So, um, uh, Laura, j j just pausing for a minute here. Uh -huh. um, on that note, with astral projection and losing time, okay, uh, do you think that mm -hmm. that people who are born again Christians who are serving the Lord, if they come in contact with something unbeknownst to them? that's new age or they let's say they have a sin that they haven't repented of um like contacting a medium or that sort of thing do you think that those blackouts of time or abductions or astral projections can oppress their walk as saved christians Yes, whether it's always a believer or not, especially if, if they have such things in their ancestry, they have inherited it. And yes, it, it is true the name of Jesus Christ um, stops these things. However, what can happen is if a person actually needs deliverance ministry, I don't like the word exorcism because it gives it a bad name, but yeah. basically the person needs uh, set free from that and they need the ties need to be stuff, throw out any occult things um, and really just be, be set free from, from that occult draw and then what they find is yes indeed consistently the name of Jesus Christ will stop anything like that and they won't get attacked like that again Amen. Um, 
Yeah, and whether it's losing time, astral projection, anything like that, because sometimes people first come to Jesus and they're still having these experiences and it confuses them because they think, you know, I'm saying the name of Jesus, it stops it for a wee while and then it comes back. But it's just because they need that deliverance and need those things cut off uh, and then they can go on to walk with the Lord in, in freedom and in peace. And I think it's worth saying that it, it's very fascinating for a lot of people, time travel and astral projection and, and all of that. Um, but I would say people who are interested in such things or, or you know the psychic phenomena, sometimes they do have these experiences against their will. Now, why would a, a good entity or a good goddess or a to lose time, especially because that's a very freaky experience for a lot of people. It's a violation. Whereas Jesus Christ would never force you to do anything. And even when you come to him, he still gives us free will to you know, follow him or not. He doesn't force us to do anything. So I think that's a kind of key point in that topic as well. Okay, so, so c c continue with, with, with where you were with your mother and these experiences. I'm trying to talk really quickly because I realize we've got a lot to share, so I'm, I'm yeah. talking. Uh, take, take your time, Lord. So, basically this was happening to my mum, and um, she even had pretty horrific experiences like being taken out of, you know, against her will, not knowing where what she was doing, losing time. And once when this happened, she had been in the kitchen uh, cooking meat. And unfortunately, the, the whole kitchen was consumed by fire. And she eventually came to and realized, you know, that the whole kitchen was just our brigade came and extinguished it. Our pets were okay, she was okay, but that could have been fatal, that could have been tragic. There were a few occasions where she and I were out shopping at the mall and she was literally picked up and thrown onto the bonnet of passing cars, um, wow. which obviously caused a of uh, pedestrians and, and witnesses. So, you know, it, it was really getting dangerous and because these entities were, were appearing all the time, she could work any longer, she couldn't do she couldn't sleep properly and she was exhausted and as you can imagine, pretty terrified as well. I was experiencing some similar attacks myself. So she went to see her doctor and she asked for uh, sleeping tablets, and when the doctor asked why, my mum explained, and the doctor said, there's no such thing as this. Um, if you're hearing voices and been being thrown about your house, etc., you really, you've become a danger to yourself and others, and I believe you suffer from sex and I'll need to put you into the psychiatric hospital. And that's exactly what happened. So mm. that was a great shock. I and the whole family. And of course, when when she went there, her home still had those spirits in it. You know, the the, the phenomena was still happening in the home, even though my mother wasn't there anymore. So you had a hallucination or you know hysteria or something. I knew it was a very real phenomena. But um, obviously the medical profession don't recognize it. So around about that time I was at university uh, in, in my second year and I met a, a Christian. I, I was also with everyone I could think of trying to get help, you know, the, the head spiritualist churches, the, the head, the the places where they had head desperately scientists seek help. I was in touch with the um, 
at that time, his name was Professor Archie Roy at the Glasgow University. He heads up the Parapsychology Department, I think it was called, or Paranormal Society, something like that. Um, really just trying to get any help for, for, for my mum. So this, this lady at uni, she said to me, well, you know, I think Jesus Christ can help with that. And uh, she invited me to her church. But it, it probably took about six months or so because I really wasn't interested. I didn't believe in, in Jesus, I didn't believe in the Bible. And uh, I, I, also, I didn't want to be disappointed again. I didn't want to be led astray or anything like that. So I was very, very cautious, very careful. But really, things, things were getting so bad, even in my own home. And then one day she said, would you like to come because there's a Christian coming to speak who has you know, give prophecies to people in the, in the audience. So of course I was used to, to things like that. Right. And I thought, well, I'll go along then. Maybe I'll get an interesting prophecy. <laughs> um, I did think, however, that, that these Christians were just psychics, thinking they were in touch with Jesus, but they just had spirit guides like everyone else. That was my, my line of, of reasoning with it. So I did go along and um, was really fascinated because apart from, uh, so far any Christian churches I'd been to were really dead and boring and nothing about them attracted me whatsoever and I really didn't think God or anything spiritual was in the place but this place was different um, and I discovered it's because these were born again Christians meaning they, you know, they had the Holy Spirit in their life they had asked Jesus to come into their life they were living like the New Testament as it were whereby they were seeing powerful things happening with, with Jesus power, people, uh, people being healed, people being prophesied to, demons being cast out, um, people speaking in tongues and so on. So this attracted me because I've never saw it before and it made me think, well, the natural things go, maybe Jesus is real. Hallelujah. So, amen. And I, I heard them speaking in tongues and I was totally enthralled by them speaking in tongues. Never heard it before. I thought it was beautiful. The the presence was just beautiful and I was very, very attracted indeed. Um, still not so sure if it was all real, but that night I went home and um, I prayed. I prayed, you know, if, if Jesus is real and if he really is the Saviour and if all this new age and, and spirit communication I've been involved in, if it's I, and I've been led astray, then please reveal to me. So, funnily enough, that day I had been clearing out my house um, and was, you know, getting things ready to go to a charity shop. Just got all the belongings that I didn't need anymore. And on top of the bag was a Bible. Mm -hmm. So it caught, it caught my eye and I thought, oh, I, I almost gave that away. So I got the Bible and uh, opened it, you know, after I had prayed and came across a verse that really was showing me that spiritualism was not what I thought it was. Um, so that kind of really take me back. I wasn't expecting to see that and um, certainly made me wonder what on earth was going on. Do you remember the also verse? Also that night, uh, the verse was in the Old Testament and it was something like I can't remember at the moment, something like, this is not the house of the Lord, the house of the Lord, the house of the Lord. It was to do with false um, false gods and things. But also around about that time, over the next few weeks, other scriptures came to me, including the ones that we may, we may um, refer to as being quite famous scriptures, like Deuteronomy 18, where it does list practices, spiritism, mediums, witchcraft, divination, and so on. Um, and also to Corinthians 11, 14, where Satan can masquerade as if he is an angel of light, and mm -hmm. obviously his uh, demons do the same. So that all certainly came to me and was revealed to me. That night, I guess because I was coming to the truth, 
and because I'd looked at the Bible, the spirits really went mad and I really, I really thought they were going to kill me, basically. So I kept the lights on all night and, and, and that was horrible. But I kept thinking about this Roman Egypti psychic and she would visit the neighbourhood about once a year and come to people's homes and read their fortune. Well, the next day the doorbell rang and I opened the door and it was her. And she said to me, I've come to Jesus Christ, I'm born again, I no longer uh, am involved in mediumship and all of that. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me last night, told me to come here and tell you today that the place you were last night is the right place and you're now on the right path. And uh, she urged me to, you know, ask Jesus Christ into my heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, that, that just blew me away because I thought, well, to, to send someone who, who, who had been in the same background, is, it really was like confirmation for me. It's a word of knowledge. Yeah, it was amazing. Just a miracle. So, so pausing for a minute and going back to Deuteronomy 18, which you had referred to, mm -hmm. about where it talks about true prophets, those mm -hmm. who dream dreams, and then the spiritual practices that are abhorred in the kingdom of God, the church, the land of Israel. Mm -hmm. That chapter is one of my favorites because first Moses expounds upon the fact that there is a prophet who will come who is like Moses, but he's greater than Moses. Um, Deuteronomy 18 verses 18 through 20, which talks about the prophet, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, who we are to listen to and obey. And we're held accountable to what he commands us to do. But the, the part I want to touch on is uh, within that chapter where it talks about uh, those that we are not to listen to, wizards, channelers, uh, spirits that peep and mutter. And I'm wondering, with your experience in the New Age versus what you've experienced in the church, is there a difference in um, in tongues within the New Age versus what we hear in charismatic circles? In the gift of tongues? Yes. Well, yes, I mean, because there are, as we know, various people can speak in tongues, Freemasons can speak in tongues, and I would say their source um, is demonic, whereas, you know, those who, who know Jesus, they, their tongues come from the source as the Holy Spirit. You have, you know, not just Freemasons, but there's all different kinds of spiritual groups of people who can speak in tongues. For every gift that uh, the Holy Spirit uh, gives, there are counterfeits, because Satan likes to, to copy, he likes to attract people away from Jesus by offering them something that would seem to fascinate them. So ha have, have you been able to pick up the difference between a false tongue and a true tongue over the years? Um, yeah, I've seen that and I know other, other people who have too. And sometimes, yeah, sometimes, um, uh, for example, someone who has come to Jesus but maybe before they were involved in demonic tongues. Again, like I said before, all of that needs to be broke off, off of them or, or it's still there. You know, mm -hmm. people say, well, how can a Christian be oppressed by a demon? Well, well, why not? Otherwise, if you saw Christian people all in a church, all coming in to the Lord, putting their hand up, receiving Jesus in the meeting, well, if that was the case, they would have a mass exorcism right there and then at their very point of salvation. <laughs> yes. You know, but, but they don't because it's a process that God takes us through. Uh, the same as physical healing, emotional healing, whatever. Um, the spiritual healing, you know, is a, is a process. Amen. Yep. So, okay, so... Um, so your your friend came, the, the 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 woman who read palms, and she said, "Okay, I've I've become a born again Christian. I've accepted Jesus into my life. I'm, I'm now walking in His kingdom, walking in the Spirit." Mm -hmm. And she she gave you that confirmation. So, 
Uh, now what happened in your Christian walk? Well, she was a stranger to me, really. She wasn't a friend, so that's why it was all the more amazing that she came. Mm. Basically, um, the Christian friend at university, I started to go to her, her church, and um, meanwhile my mother was still in psychiatric hospital, and she um, was allowed to get out at the weekend, so I would take her to this church. She asked Jesus Christ into her heart as well, um, after a while, and um, she threw out all of her New Age paraphernalia too. However, the church that I was at then, it was a new church, the pastor was very young, they had no experience yet of casting out demons, and basically, they just assumed as soon as someone becomes a Christian, all the demons must automatically leave, um, which of course, as I say, if that was true, you would see mass exorcisms upon the very point of salvation. I need to have those demonic experiences, and, and so did I, and her home continued to be um, possessed by those entities, and basically it got to the stage where she couldn't stay any longer, and she committed suicide. Sorry. And you know, it, it was so tragic, but this is something that I am a spiritualist, and since then, since I left all of that 20 years ago, it's still something I hear about constantly from people worldwide. They've either experienced in psychiatric hospitals, they've been suicidal, um, or their loved ones have committed suicide simply because of such demonic attack. Um, so that's why I do emphasise that deliverance ministry is so important and sadly, you know, a lot of churches just don't have deliverance ministry. They don't believe that they need to cast out demons. So when people are in trouble and maybe go to a church for help, oftentimes they're not getting the help they need, um, which is, is tragic. Yes, so, it is. Yeah, I, 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 I concur with that uh, 100%. I mean, you know, over here in the States, it's a battleground. And the thing about, uh, about what we face, you know, whether it's overseas in the UK or over here, you know, churches really still have the Nicolaitan mindset that we had even in Jesus' day, where you had these schools of thought and man-made regulations of church denominations, basically. And it's put people in a salvation mindset, which is good, but Christ in the Great Commission said, we need to make disciples. So we need to be hearers of the word and doers of the word, not just people who sit in a pew every Sunday and wait for a rapture. And while you know there are good churches that are doing discipleship, I probably only know of two where I live that do any deliverance, even if it's mass deliverance, which I, I have a contention with personally. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it, it's just not something that's really applied to Christians. And when it is, when, when, when people come to that revelation and they find out, oh my gosh, you know, I've been saved all this time. This is why I've had all this gunk. Now it makes sense, and Christians can can say, wow, you know, believers need to pray more with each other. We need to bury each other's burdens more. We need to seek uh, deliverance and emotional and spiritual healing uh, every day from Christ's grace. Yeah. So uh, just re really quick to kind of um, uh, cue in new listeners who have joined. You're listening to Conspiracy Bereans Radio. I'm Robert Randall, your host. And today we are talking with Laura Maxwell. She uh, she came from the New Age, and she now is an uh, she's an author, a speaker, and a radio show host. And she speaks against the New Age and everything that has to do with spiritualism, and talks about how uh, people can come into the loving arms of Jesus Christ's kingdom. So. Now, now that we kind of have a, a really good understanding of your testimony, Laura, I want to really touch on the 
the new age as you understand it from from uh, in Europe, because at least much of what I've researched, the heart of the new age came from Europe, and it eventually came over here uh, to the states through Francis Bacon and uh, Freemasonry. But how, um, uh, in terms of the new age as you've understood it, and those that you've talked to who have come out of the new age. Um, do you see a hierarchy within the New Age? A lot of people talk about, um, for example, uh, Joseph Marquis, who we've had on the show, Doc Marquis, um, and uh, the late John Todd. M- many, many others have said that the Rothschilds or certain families control the New Age. Others say it's a spiritual Illuminati of sorts. How, how do you see the, the New Age in Europe today? Yes, I, I do see that, um, especially when you have people who are out of um, the Illuminati and so on who will, will tell you that. And, um, you know, I, I was taught myself by, by mediums and so on about the plan, as I mentioned, Madame Blavatsky and so on, about all of these, you know, she considered Masons and, and all of these groups to be like a brotherhood. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and, and the Illuminati, I know an ex-Illuminist and others who say the same, that, that they were taught all of this. But I would also say that it, it's not quite as clear-cut as that, because there are also uh, many people, people groups and, and spiritual groups who don't want anything to do with, with the Illuminati or New World Order. In fact, they're, they're, they're just like us, where we're, we're, they are um, trying to awaken people to that. Um, they, they're not involved in any of those kind of things, they're exposing it all, and yet they're actually doing some very spiritual practices which are the exact same as what the Illuminati do, what, what the New Age gurus do, and yet they don't call it New Age, but it's the exact same um, practices, and it's the exact same rhetoric and messages behind it all that they they can ever believe that the entities that they're in touch with are of a are higher more pure vibration, more pure energy, um, and I find that very sad because in actual fact I would say they are being deceived by the same types of demons uh, that will just tell them anything to get them away from Jesus Christ and, and the Bible. And that's often a theme that comes through from a lot of these so-called entities, whether they claim to be aliens, you know, Pleiadians, whatever, that that on a theme that I had something on my own radio show recently, he's a, a well-known Joseph Jordan, he is a, a scientist, he knows top scientists around the world and, and for the last 20 years he has gathered research and information that has said people worldwide have been able to stop entities appearing, so-called aliens from different planets, by the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ. The scientific community is actually well aware of this, but will not release it to the public. So Joseph um, was told this off off record. And I've had people on my show who were um, in touch with aliens, who the the aliens told them, you know, to to follow us, um, you need to renounce your faith in Jesus Christ. Now, why Jesus Christ? There's lots of different so-called gods will renounce your faith in Jesus Christ because they know he is the saviour and at the same time those two men who have been on my show when they started to be attacked by those aliens they managed to repel them by the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. So yeah I would say New Age now it's maybe not the best way to describe a lot of what we see nowadays because a lot of people don't associate with New Age as such, um, maybe esoteric is perhaps a better term for basically anything that, that um, people are involved in that has drawn them away from Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. And that's a rather big claim, but I'll say, well, test it then. Test it in the name of Jesus Christ the next time an entity appears to you, whether it's claiming to be a, a, an alien from another galaxy, whatever. Test it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Speak to it about of Jesus, you know, and watch its reaction. Right, exactly. You know, we're we're, we're commanded in uh, in First John. 
the epistle of 1 John to test the spirits to know if they are of God. So if if even a big bright angel comes in your room and says, oh, I'm here to give you light and spread the gospel of Jesus, well, you better figure out what Jesus that angel adheres to. If it's not Jesus Christ as God come in the flesh, then it's a false spirit. And that, that's what John says in the Word. And time and time again, uh, even uh, e- even in, in, in the way Christianity is going, in terms of this ecumenical, transhumanist, uh, spiritual mishmash, it it's like that Jesus is not come in the flesh at all. They're 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 trying to strip away his humanity and put him in line with all the other spiritual deities that were false uh, false gods that are out there. It's very sad. So, in terms of of the way in which the esoteric practices are done uh, uh, in Europe, when uh, when you have talked to, to New Agers or from your own personal experience, have you seen or heard testimonies about people who have talked about uh, uh, territorial spirits within this movement, uh, basically egregores that are thought forms basically that have certain powers over certain movements? Uh, Well, I guess I've heard that through so many different spiritual beliefs that that, that believe in that and and again, I would say whatever the entity is don't just believe what it's telling you test it Mm -hmm. in Jesus' name and I think especially 2015 was known as the year of, of Lucifer's light by, by certain groups. 2016, we have the whole Temple of Baal thing going on that I'm sure you're aware of. Yes. Um, to me, that really speaks of Baal, obviously, was um, the, you know, we're talking about false prophets here. I, I do believe this, this year we will see much more false prophecies. Uh, we will see much more messages coming through from so called entities. More deception, really, for believers and non-believers alike, um, right. from different entities. And it's like you you said, whether that's in the Christian church or not, if entities are, are going to turn up and start saying, "I'm an angel, um, Jesus Christ has sent me, and uh, I'm here to tell you that Jesus is not the only way anymore. We've discovered that he's not." Do you know all sorts of different messages we've got people now um contacting ghosts who would never have contacted ghosts before um but again or shadow people or whatever but again if they contradict jesus christ you know that all of these entities are saying the same thing they're trying to keep people away from jesus so why is that and this is part of the luciferian agenda it's part of the illuminati plan and all of that so it, it's worth people really looking into it and as you mentioned about the different deities the zeitgeist was debunked that famous zeitgeist oh movie. god that it was debunked that piece of trash yeah and proven to be lies and um fraudulence and the guy who headed up zeitgeist he is part of the lucifer's trust therefore yes. obviously has uh, obviously has sympathies with, with lucifer so you know you need to look at all that guys and and if you feel, well, there's so many religions, so many spiritualities, how can I know which one's right? I could spend my whole life investigating all the spiritualities out there. How will I ever know who is the true God? Well, I would kind of reverse that, and I would say, yeah, it would take your lifetime, and my goodness, the study that you would have to do. I would put it this way instead. A quicker way to do this is actually to look at top apologetics websites, scholars who have proved the Bible is true. They have proved Jesus Christ did live, die on a cross, rise again. That you know these guys, even some of them who are not Christian believers, so they don't have a propaganda here, um, have proved it. So if that is true, Jesus is the Saviour, those other zeitgeist gods and what have you weren't, then what Jesus said is true, 
what the Bible said is true, and yes, indeed, all of these other spiritualities are coming from Lucifer, a.k.a. Satan. Right, and, you know, the, that that piece of trash zeitgeist, and it's, it's just an absolute god-awful movement that should never have been birthed on the planet. Um, when I first came in contact with that, when I started doing apologetics myself, it uh, the, the very first film that came out, I had a, an unction from the spirit when I started watching it because I didn't know what it was. I just saw the zeitgeist. Okay, what is this? Mm-hmm. And it's like the first 15 minutes, I think, it's just wavy, fluffy music with lights all over the place. And I'm like, what is this? And then, I, and then, and then the spirit said, you, you need to start praying. I was like, okay, all right, dear Jesus, you know, if this is a, a deception, you better wake me up to it now. You better protect me with your blood and with the living waters of the Holy Spirit. And as soon as that guy started narrating his stupid theory about all these gods being the same as Jesus, I knew right away this is abs- This is just one of the most deadly uh, witchcraft spells on mankind. And the fact that we have the spiritual domains of the Internet, such as it is, uh, it makes it ten times worse, and you know um, the the problem is, and I've encountered so many people who go with the latest fads yeah, in yeah. prophecy circles, in the even even the latest Christian apologists, they run with their theories or their books or whatever as if it's gospel, and they don't mm-hmm. read their Bibles, they don't fact check the whole of Scripture, not just the New Testament, the Old Testament too, because it's one book. Uh, 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 First Timothy, one faith, one book, one Lord, one spirit, one Father, one God, uh, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. It's one book, one faith. It's not Jew and Gentile. Uh, uh, it's not slave or free, rich or poor. All are one in Christ Jesus. If Christians were discipled into the covenant, understanding covenant relationship with Christ... And how to function in his kingdom. If the kingdom of heaven is in you, and we are to seek that first, so that all else is appointed to us in the name, destiny, and calling that we are given as believers, the Christian church would not be defanged, it would not be defrocked, it would not be wimpy, we would not be sitting and sucking milk off of the Protestant, Reformed, Catholic church's breasts, and we would be living in the meat of the word, we would see more miracles, we would see deliverances, we would see blessing and biblical prosperity, not this sham stuff you see on the Blasphemy Network, but we would see Israel or the church put into fruition like it should be. And and there are many in the remnant, many believers today who are saying, you know, something's coming. Good or bad, God is on the move, and we need to be ready. We need to understand the whole of Scripture according to the covenant. And, and understand the whole of Scripture as believers, how we function in the kingdom. When's the last time anyone got on, on the pulpit and said, let's seek the kingdom of God? You know? It, it's... Yeah. I. Um, kingdom mentality and kingdom discipleship if we are if we are a kingdom in a royal priesthood we should function in that brethren and i'm just one guy laura is just one woman of god and we have a duty today to allow the saints to be empowered with the living spirit of god and you you're you you're, you're so right laura you know, in terms of just the amount of deception that's come through. And it's time to wake up. It's time to get serious about our walk. And, you know, I think a a lot of the reason why we we are not seeing people healed, I mean, we do see a lot of it, but we're not seeing it as much as we saw in Jesus' time and the time of the disciples. And I think that's because so many um, believers now have got such a mix going on um, probably in their ancestry there's been that syncretism going on, they've been dabbling in different, you know, witchcraft or occult, whatever, 
and the Christians themselves are needing deliverance and set free from that. And you do often find when, when believers uh, suddenly realise being a Christian 20 years, oh hey, I, I need curses broke off because I used to do this, this and this. They go, they get the deliverance ministry for that very issue and wow, suddenly they start to get healed of conditions that they, they couldn't get healed of before. Mm -hmm. Because when they, went, when they went and asked for healing, yeah, Jesus heals, but, but he also delivers, and often the two are, are married. You, 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 your body gets healed of ailments once those curses and those demons are cast out. And it's not that Jesus does not want to heal you. It's often the case that it's just because there's curses needing broken. Um, Amen. And again, as you see, you know, whenever a new fad comes along, whether it's a new fad in the, the esoteric realm or um, groups, or whether it's a new fad creeping into uh, the Christian church, often it's not completely new because there's nothing new under the sun. Often it's an old fad repackaged, as it were, and it frustrates me because I know that, that the old fads have been debunked by great scholars, great minds, apologetics. They've been debunked like Zeitgeist and so on. So, you know, I kind of wish that people would go and look for, for, for the debunks <laughs> and see the truth of it and not, not fall for it. But obviously that's the way um, deception does does work. Um, right. But, and just the, even the whole thing about ghost hunting and all of that, I think I mentioned Christian deliverance, deliverance ministries now who are taking this on board. They're now feeling that apart from casting demons out of people, and so on, they are now getting into uh, helping ghosts onto the light and all of this, um, which the Bible shows ghosts cannot return when someone is dead, that you know they are gone, they cannot return, um, and, and, it, and the Bible tells us not, not to do that for simple reason, God knows fine well, if we do any of these things, we're going to be talking to demons Amen. that can yeah. personally and I have met deliverance ministries who um, have done that and I've you know, explained it from my point of view and I know of a, a few at least who have taken what I've said on board, went back and when they've met these so-called ghosts again, they have challenged it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth to show who it truly is and yeah, it has morphed into a demon. So yeah, Christians can be deceived too by these so-called ghosts. Um, because you know, in the Bible, God was constantly telling his his children not to get into other things simply because, yeah, if you go in and do some occult um, practice, it will come upon you. It um, will, yeah. You, you're you're so right. In fact, that that brings to mind what you were talking about. There's this uh, practice that's at least it's happening here in the states. Uh, it's called grave sucking where a lot of these neo-dispensational people are are going to relatives' graves and trying to channel their spirits. Or Benny Hinn. Benny Hinn is admitted to going to Catherine Kuhlman and her sister's grave and uh, channeling the spirits of the Kuhlman sisters because I, I guess that's where he gets his power. I mean... It, it's some serious, serious stuff, folks. And th there's even Christians that I know who've messed with this paranormal stuff. And sadly, I, I really think this is due to a bad theological, almost mystic interpretation of how we view heaven and hell. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible says, you know, people will say, well, wait a minute, if there are no ghosts, if there's no after-body experiences... Then why does First Peter say, you know, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord? Okay, well, you can take that in the sense that you think it means, okay, from traditional Christian thought, that your soul is kind of up there with Jesus, but the Bible says that basically there's death, and then there's the resurrection. And you're going to be in either one of two resurrections. You're either going to be in the resurrection of the blessed or the resurrection of the damned. So to be absent from the body, you're asleep. 
until the resurrection day. Then you're present with the Lord for either eternal life or condemnation. Uh, personally, I would rather be in, you know, eternal life, you know, the book of life. That would be a good thing. Lake of Fire is meant for Satan and his demons. It's not meant for humanity. And this is why the gospel of the kingdom is needed to be preached so humanity can be saved. What, 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 uh, do you agree with that or, or uh, with that analysis? I think, yes, and I think also as well, you know, to look at the, the whole thing about ghosts, you know, it, it can be debunked really quite well. In actual fact, and there's a guy, an expert on it, he's called Mark Hanneman. He's been on my radio show and he's wrote a book called Seeing Ghosts Through God's Eyes. I urge anyone to get that book. He goes through lots of reasoning, lots of logic. You know, when someone dies, um, Robert, why would they get lost or earthbound? God is, is quite capable of taking their soul the, the moment they die. You know, it's like the old movies, you, you kind of a see whereby someone dies and an angel comes to take them to heaven yeah. or a, a demon comes to take them to hell through a, a portal or whatever terminology wish to um, use. God is quite capable of, of seeing a person when they die and not losing them on their way to their destination. Yeah. Um, and, and why would, you know, there's a famous medium, Anne Winkowski, who has said this happens to her all the time, it's come to her looking for help uh, to, to see them on. Well, you know, she, she, has, she has said that there's people, but, but she's also said, for example, that she's been taught, and she is meant to be one of the best, she's been taught that about 90 odd percent of people who die will be earthbound and trapped on earth because we've all got unfinished business and we've got trauma or we've got this and that. And she's also said some scary stuff like, if your child dies, it will be trapped on earth, earthbound with the likes of Hitler and all these people because there's no different places to go, they're just earthbound and that's it. You know, the, the, t t there's a lot of um, strange teachings going on and as I say, go back to the Bible, what does it say? If the Bible has been proven to be true, Jesus Christ is proven to be true, then we have to look at what it says about the whole ghost um, phenomena. Right, right, and, and uh, you know, in fact, I think it was last year or two years ago, there was a prominent Christian author in the States here who, I think he spent about two, well, no, three years researching the afterlife phenomena. I mean, this is a pretty well-known author in Christian circles here in the States. He's on Skywatch TV a lot. And he wrote a book, The Supernatural Worldview. I would not recommend anyone read it, but he wanted to try and analyze, you know, is, is there really an afterlife? Mm -hmm. And he prevents some fascinating things about people who have been like, for example, uh, one woman was in surgery and she left her body and she went up to the roof of a building and she saw a shoe. Mm -hmm. And then she went back down and she heard a doctor make some crude joke she went back into her body after the surgery and she basically said, you know, that, that there's a shoe on the roof. And this woman looked at her incredis, incredulously and went up on the roof and sure enough, there's this shoe on the roof. And no one could have possibly have seen it from any vantage point except for, you know, uh, had, had they gone through, you know, the walls and whatnot. And it's, it's testimonies like that that I'm so cautious about because... Yeah. You know, apart from Jesus Christ himself, the Lord, God Almighty, taking people into spiritual experiences, like John in Revelation chapter 1, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. If it's not of God, or, or um, for example, uh, I think it's Isaiah or, or Ezekiel, where they see God's throne and you know and they're standing there and going I I'm a man of unclean lips they're in the spiritual realm because God wants them to be there so mm -hmm. I can't judge this woman and say okay you know God didn't have a hand in it but yet scripture's pretty specific that 
you know, if it's not the hand of God, something something else I think is going on, and it's it's controversial stuff. I mean, this author even spent, I think it was six months with um, with the top researchers in paranormal activity for this book, and I'm si- I'm sitting here reading this, and I'm thinking, are you nuts? Do you know not to play around with spirits? And he, he's writing this book as if, you know, spirits exist. There is an afterlife. Yes, there is. But you don't go play around with it in the devil's kingdom. Yeah, because, uh, as I said earlier, you know, there's people within the old cult, um, or who have left it, um, we mentioned Illuminati, we, we mentioned different groups, who, uh, mediums, spiritualists, I was certainly taught as a new ager, Lucifer is the source of all all types of spiritual uh, experiences, you know everything like that it, it boils down to either Lucifer aka Satan or Jesus so, you know, yes, all the, the kind of people can have amazing experiences they can leave their body, they can um, feel that they've went beyond different dimensions different galaxies and all of that and they've spoke to beings, they've spoke to God but you know, a lot of these people will come back with different experiences that are dazzling and wonderful and all the rest of it. But, you know, you have to say, was it Jesus they really were speaking to? Oftentimes they'll say, no, it was a goddess or it was an alien, this, that, the other. And again, people who have been involved in such supernatural phenomena um, and have tested their experiences in Jesus' name have found that the beings morphed into a demon. And a right. lot of the experiences are beautiful, that you know, they go up a tunnel, they see light and all of that, because it's very, very similar to um, what you imagine you would see if you were to, to meet God, but it's it's the false God, the one that is keeping people away, um, keeping people away from Jesus. Right, yeah. It, do, do you think so that... So the experiences are really huh? real, they really are, definitely very real. They the are. And that's why people are so deceived by them because they're they're wonderful experiences. Lucifer used to, you know, before he became Satan, he, he lived in heaven. God, he he knows all about light and um, creating blissful feelings because he he, he lived there himself. Um, but he is a liar and he is a deceiver. Right. Uh, um, Isaiah fourteen, Ezekiel twenty eight, the anointed cherub that covers. Yeah, he he was he was once a, a good angel. And then he he did fall. Um, if 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 you're new to Christianity, I, I would I would say you know that that uh, I mean these are words of wisdom that I think Sung Tzu said. You know, know your enemy, and we we have to know the schemes of the devil, and they're found in the Word of God. They're not found in in esoteric lore in in Blavatsky's big phone books of sacred doctrine or Albert Pike's morals and dogma. They're found in the Holy Word of God. And the Bible that we have, you know, if if you have an experience or have had an experience, if it doesn't line up somewhere within the written word of God, then I would highly question what type of an experience that you had and pray. Pray to Jesus about it and say, you know, was this real? Was this valid? I I mean, for for me, I've I had a family background very similar, you know, in terms of um, my great grandfather was president of the Elks Lodge in Alabama. He was a worshipful master. Um, I had, um, when I was in the Jehovah's Witnesses for for ten years, I had a Mormon Bible I didn't know about. It was a King James Mormon Bible, and that had a familiar spirit that oppressed me. And I recently got rid of that. And then, and that came through a dream catcher that I made in kindergarten, which caused terrible nightmares and what I what I what I have termed um, dream paralysis where basically a channeler takes your body and feeds a dream to you basically creates an inception environment if you will uh, the movie inception and feeds you subliminal uh, images that are horrific to where you don't want to fall asleep again and uh, and then you know when I was a Christian uh, early on, I found myself having blackouts, and I said, "What's this?" And then I found out there's a spirit of seizure, there's a spirit of blackouts, 
And, you know, it, it's, it's over time, of course, like you said, Laura, that we grow in our Christian walk, we grow as believers, and we really need to do our own research. Be Bereans, Acts 17, 11. Test everything. Research the scriptures, both testaments, and view, view it as one book, one book written by the hand of God, and he will guide you. He will deliver you if you seek him and you are faithful and you pray to him. Jesus Christ is still capable of doing miracles today, just as he's done in my life, just as he's done in Laura's life. Laura, let's let's give some people some hope. What what miracles or what, what things has God done in your ministry and in your life that has really encouraged your faith and that can encourage our listeners today? Because I, I know we've been talking about a lot of dark stuff today, but I really want to you know, feed our listeners with some hope in the kingdom of God. Well, yeah, basically in the last 20 years that I've been a believer, uh, I've certainly underwent deliverance whereby um, whether I was into yoga or, or whatever, you know, there are entities associated with each of these types of things. And yes, these entities came out. I noticed a change in myself after every um, deliverance, um, and, and people I know who have been healed, I've been healed of things, I was healed of fibromyalgia, um, I've been Hallelujah. healed of things, I can't, yeah, I can't even remember the amount of things I've been healed of, I had carpal tunnel syndrome, I was healed of that, you know, Jesus, I felt um, oil on my head, it felt like, and it came right down my hand, my body, my arms opened right up, the doctors, couldn't believe it because they had saw what I was like before and so on and really in the last 20 years the amount of people I have met um, or heard about or in, in my own uh, ministry in recent years just like what, what I've said that the more someone that the scales come off the more deception that leaves a person the more um, they, they, they believe in Jesus and they have certain curses cut off then while suddenly their bodies get healed of various ailments, they, they see improvements in their marriage, they see improvements in their um, em employment. It's like the curses get removed, uh, the blessings can now flow freely because that person has cut off all the demonic stuff, you know, um, and they start to live uh, in Jesus and see their life begin to be transformed. Um, and just, I think as well, it's important to, for this message of hope because we know that things are going to get darker and people really need to get uh, anchored closer to Jesus. If they know him already, they need to get closer to him. And if they don't know him, you know, I would urge you to please consider what we've been saying and, and ask Jesus into your heart because we, we know it's, um, the Bible says what will happen in the last days. We can certainly see it. Um, Anyway, things are, are, are getting darker, and we need we need Christ in our, in our life, not just for this life, but for eternity. Yes, Amen. Uh, um, really quick, uh, with the time that we have left for our listeners out there, if you have any questions for Laura, please submit them on the MixLR chat. And um, Laura, are, are you up for questions from listeners? Yeah, yeah, okay. of course. All right, well, while, while we're waiting for, for some questions to pop up, um, in terms of, uh, of your radio show and your contact information, uh, let, let people know uh, how, how they can reach you online. Yes, um, you can find my blog, a spiritualquest.tk, and on that there's links to my YouTube channel where you'll see some TV interviews that I've done over the years and you can also find my links to the radio show which is called The Supernatural with Laura Maxwell and that's on Eternal Radio that has other hosts apart from myself and you can find the how to listen to that uh, on, on the blog. Okay. Uh, are, are you on iTunes or on TuneIn? It's on TuneIn, Eternal Radio. Okay. Good. Um, so, so your, your blog, uh, spiritualquest.tk, uh, and then there's also the, the alternate address, your spiritual uh, quest, um, dot wordpress.com. 
That's also uh, your alternate address, right? And YouTube channel, Laura Maxwell X Spiritist, and it's got lots of testimonies of, of different people um, worldwide as well that I like to collect. Okay, awesome, awesome, definitely. Uh, so, in terms of of what we are facing today um, as children of God, what what advice do you have for Christians? Um, who are losing hope, those who feel that, that you know, if things are too dark, what, um, what, what spiritual encouragement can you give our listeners today? Well, you know, the Bible does say it's going to get dark, and, and we know that many will fall away. I believe there will be so-called angels, ghosts, aliens turning up to tell even Christians that Jesus is not the only way. So, we will mass deception. Um, basically, it, it's focusing on, on Christ. You know, the Bible does say focus on him and not on, on what's going on there. Not to be dwelling on negative things, not to be becoming fearful. Remember, he has said he will never leave you nor forsake you. Um, and no matter what happens to us now on this earth, we will be with Jesus in heaven for eternity. Hallelujah. And you, you know, even myself at times, I have to talk about these dark topics a lot. And yeah, it does get to me at times. So every one of us, we have to keep going, going back to uh, Jesus, focusing on his love for us, get closer to him, um, and, and really just spend the time we have in, in showing others the, the love of Jesus and um, just doing what we know Jesus is calling us to do. Yes. So, um, uh how about how about some guidelines uh, for for a nice healthy church, um, you know that that uses the Bible, that has a prayer group, maybe, maybe deliverance ministry. Any guidelines from that, or or any means by which people can discern uh, any false spirits going on in churches? Basically, um, it sounds a rather pessimistic way to put it, but I think because we are more and more in the last days, we're, we're finding that that. that so many churches now are, are um, going astray in one way or another, and that's really sad. So it's not quite so easy to... You could look at a website that describes a local church and it could look ideal, um, and yet go along and, and, and soon find that there are things happening there that are not um, quite so good. But I think it as well it's, it's important to, to realise there is no such thing as, as a perfect church, and we're just not going to find one. Um, at all, so it's being led by the Holy Spirit, praying and asking asking Jesus where He wants you, He wants you to be. Uh, and sometimes, sometimes you know, I've been in churches that that, that were pretty bad stuff going on in there, and I, and yet I did feel Jesus led me there. And I can only conclude it's because He did want me to see the heresies that were going on, and He wanted to teach me so that uh, I'm now aware of these things. So, you know, the whole process he uses, everything we go through to draw us closer to him and to open our eyes. Hallelujah. Amen. So, um, were you ever trained to infiltrate churches? Or, or did, do you know people who were trained to infiltrate churches in the New Age? Uh, no, I personally wasn't trained, although it was something that um, was encouraged we do not just uh, in churches but in every um, walk of life you know whether in school or education medical field or, or employment whatever that we were certainly to draw more people into new age um, but i wasn't trained to as such but yeah i have heard of others who who certainly were uh, trained uh, to do that and, and, it, and it's, it's obvious it's happened because you see a lot of occult things happening in, in churches now so yeah it is uh, a real a real phenomena a friend of mine ex illuminati member carolyn hamlet she has a great website that um, yeah that you can find out more about that type of thing um, beyond the physical realm i think it's called carolyn hamlet but you'll find her on my blog and, and certainly the illuminati the Lucis trust yeah um there has been infiltration in the church, definitely. Okay. Are, 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 there, are there any telltale signs of specific jewelry or 
um, hand signals that people are, are giving that we could look for to kind of warn pastors and say, you know, watch this person? I don't know because <laughs> the, the, also at the same time people can do such things, that, you know, innocence, people can buy jewelry that they just don't realize is occultic, so True. Um, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not so sure. I think, I, I guess it, it, it's just over time, normally over time more and more evidence builds up and you begin to see a, a, a pattern um, or, or think, or you just sense that, that um, there are demonic spirits about. Um, it's not always apparent straight away. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. Those with the discernment of spirits that see demons will, of course, see demons around a person or, or you know, black shadows on them and all of that. Um, but not all, all Christians obviously have that uh, right. gift. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. We we have we have one uh, we have we do have one question from a listener. Uh, this comes from uh, from Dave and. Um, he wants to know, have you heard of the Toronto Blessing? And what do you think of that? Dave, yeah. Um, yeah, I've, I've heard of it. And um, I guess that's pretty much widespread now. I think with any uh, revival that, that's ever happened, you know, down through history, we certainly can see a mix of things going on. And again, it's just like I said earlier, because we are human, and um, sometimes things do 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 get in and, and um, you know mix things up. So yeah, there's there's some things that I believe in speaking in tongues. There's some things that are look as if they're from the Holy Spirit. There's some things that look they're not from the Holy Spirit. There's some things sometimes be hard to tell and that's when we say um, discernment is needed. Um, at the end of the day I think people, as, as you say, it's, it's getting back to the Bible, it's been very aware of when any move of, of God happened, was there anything else happening at the same time, perhaps for, for those in leadership, did they have an occult background, you know, lots of things like this um, um, can be in the picture so it's not always an easy thing to um, look into. You know, I've heard of revivals where people were being healed and um, it all seemed wonderful and, and yet the, the minister would eventually say that there's dead people here that have been in a previous revival, that there's dead Christians here that were famous preachers that are here to heal the people. And again, that you know, that's contradictory with, with the Bible ghosts don't come back, so whether the guy was a famous preacher of a hundred years ago or not, he's not in the meeting healing people. It's, right. uh, it's contradictory. That's that's actually a good point that you brought up. Research the leader's background. Dig into to, to who's teaching you and find out, you know, what, what their past is. Cause, and, and my personal understanding of the Toronto Blessing is that it was this very charismatic movement where there was a lot of um, holy laughter, um, and if I'm not mistaken, they they did a recent thing where gold glitter came from the ceiling. I guess it was supposed to be the Shekinah glory of God, which it looked like just a ventilator blowing out glitter to me. And you know, um, and and then of course there's the International House of Prayer, and the a, a lot of these neo apostolic reform churches that are members of Rick Joyner's group and various others, Todd Bentley, etc. A lot of them use a lot of occult techniques. Um, so, you know, just, just be careful. You know, if you, if you've been looking into that stuff, pray over it, pray about it and look into the leader's background. It, are, are they a faithful minister or like Todd Bentley, who's doing, you know, who's giving out, you know, um, Hindu spirits you know, and yet he's found in an adulterous relationship with his secretary and leaves his wife and kids, you know. Um, so ju just pray about, you know, what you're looking at, what, what you're getting involved with, even if it says it's a sincere church. You want to make sure it lines up with the written word of God. That's think, ultimately the ultimate authority. I think what um, concerns me is that, that a lot of guys now, you know, quite well known ministries are um, coming alongside the Pope and Catholicism, 
and I think that what we're going to see happen with that is definitely a, a more of the, um, apart from ghosts coming through, as it were, people claiming to see the Virgin Mary or dead saints or, or all of that. But obviously within that you have got the um, Jesuit uh, um, links, the old links. And as you said, guys like, you know, Rick Joyner, he has admitted he is a, not a Freemason, what, what is it called now? Oh, it's very like a Freemason. Oh, um, um, yes, he he is he's a Knight of Malta, which is a Catholic order. Uh huh. So again, not not to point fingers at, at anyone at all, because anybody can be deceived by 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 things. But yeah, you know what? We'll look a little bit deeper, and there's things like like gold dust, and there's some things to be honest, Robert. I'm not absolutely sure about myself. Um, because I think God could do some amazing miracles and the likes, but I think that when, when you don't know either way or, or you're not completely sure, to just uh, avoid it, basically, because you can pick up demons, and I have been in meetings where, yeah, that, I, I saw stuff that's questionable. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, Laura. Well... Uh, we're about out of time, but I want to thank you for coming on the show today. Do you want to close with a word of prayer? Thank you. I would love to, Robert. Thank you, Father God, thank you for, for this show. Thank you for the opportunity um, for Robert and I to share. And I just pray that if anyone is listening who, who needs to come close to you, Jesus, that they will ask you to be their saviour today. Your Holy Spirit will draw them to yourself and you, they will be surrounded by your love and your peace and that you will take them into all truth. In your precious name, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you so much, Laura, for coming on the show today and uh, God bless you. Thank you for what you're doing. Thanks so much. Thank you for what you're doing too. God bless you. God bless you, Laura. Thank you. Okay, brethren. Well, that was Laura Maxwell. Um, again, you can find her website at a spiritual quest dot dk. Uh, sorry, dot tk. The letters T and K. Okay. Uh, a spiritual quest dot tk or the alternate link, your spiritual quest dot wordpress dot com. Also, check her out on YouTube, Laura Maxwell, ex-spiritualist. Check out her books, check out her videos, check out her blog. And please be in prayer for her and her ministry. Please be in prayer for our ministry. Uh, we come off and on weekdays, 10 a.m. Mountain Time, U.S. Time, 5 p.m. European Time. And we thank you all for joining us today. If you have any questions, please message us on Facebook, like us on Facebook, and subscribe to us on Mixlr.com for any upcoming Bible studies, interviews, or news shows that we do. Also, uh, for those of you on the chat, uh, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for sending all the love with the heart icons. That really helps our ratings. And we love you and we bless you. And we are here to encourage you, brethren. We want you to know that today is the day for you to take a stand with the kingdom of God. Today is your day to seek first the kingdom of God, and all else will be appointed to you. It's important today to understand how we function in a covenant relationship with Jesus Christ, and how that covenant applies to the kingdom. Yes, there were many covenants in the Bible, but there is the one eternal covenant of the Melchizedek priesthood, from Genesis 14 to the Gospel of John, to the Gospels, where Jesus Christ said, this is the new covenant or the renewed covenant. Some even put it in that phrase because Christ is the new man. He is the second Adam who has come to redeem sinners by his saving grace. So brethren, it's time to get real. It's time to get serious about your name, your destiny, and your calling as a priest of the Most High God. You have a calling. You have a destiny. And you need to pray for your pastors. You need to pray with believers. You need to start a prayer team. You need to read your word of God. Get serious about it. Eat it up. It's bread. It's, it's, it's nourishment. 
read the Old Testament, read the New Testament, and read it as one book, one faith, one Lord, one Spirit, one God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's one faith. It's not New Testament, Old Testament, Jew and Gentile. There is no Jew and Gentile, slave or free, rich or poor. All are one in Christ Jesus if we believe. And so it doesn't, it doesn't matter about your denomination. It doesn't matter about what church father created your denomination. What matters is what is your relationship with Christ and where do you fit in his kingdom? Pastors don't preach on the kingdom today, and if they do, it's very superficial. And so it's time to seek his kingdom. How does his kingdom function? How do you know how to function in his kingdom? I would suggest reading the Gospel of John and the Gospel of Matthew to get the good to get a good New Testament perspective of how that works. And then read the Torah. Read the five, first five books of Moses, okay? The law doesn't save you, but when you, but when you function in Christ's kingdom, when Christ is in you, he will show you how to love him and keep his commandments. John 14, 15. We've all fallen, fallen short from the grace of God, which is why we need the Savior Jesus. That's why we need his living, loving, innocent blood. And from there then we can walk in power and authority and claim the promises he's given us in his Bible, in his word. All right, brethren, thank you so much today for joining us. I'm Robert Randall. This is Conspiracy Bereans Radio. May God bless you. May he keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. Shalom. God bless you all.